Hey there everyone, it is Christy and I wanted to make some original content because it's been a while and also because people might be getting tired of the reruns, which I totally get. I've been gone for a week and they've been coming out slowly, but there's not a lot of variety in terms of the theme. And I don't have a... I, I'm tired from traveling, so I don't have a lot of time to prep, so I wanted to make something kind of quick and easy. This is less of me being, you know, lecturing and doing a whole bunch of research and more pointing out a question that I don't think that I've seen a lot of people address and might be worth exploring. And it has to do with the cognitive dissonance of people who are in the United States who are Christians and evangelical Christians who think that they're, that the, America is a chosen nation, but the fact that there is no basis for American government in the Bible. And this video is just exploring some really easy, like, basic data and putting together a real simple argument, less to make a case and more to perhaps open up a discussion because I don't, again, I don't see this a lot addressed on YouTube, but it seems obvious to me when I look at the Bible and then I look at what's happening to, with Christians in the U.S. So this video is my thoughts on the fact that although many conservative Christians think the U.S. is favored by God, the fact is that there is no political theory in the Bible that justifies democracy or secular government. Those just don't exist. And even more than that, when you read the Bible, it suggests that the American Revolution itself would have been condemned by the biblical authors as overturning God's plan. It's kind of hard to see how America can be a nation chosen by God when its fundamental existence is an aberration in the eyes of God according to the biblical text. And that's pretty much what I wanted to throw out there as an observation of a contradiction and cognitive dissonance in the Christian community, in parts of the Christian community in the U.S. What kinds of parts am I talking about? Well, here's an example. Ted Cruz said that he's a Christian first and an American second. I find that a little bit troubling because to me, as an atheist, what I see that translated into is I'm a theocrat first and I'll then pick and choose the sort of secular laws that fit within my personal preferences, as opposed to saying, I'm an American who's committed to universal, in terms of the citizens of our country, a equitable treatment under the law that applies to everyone fairly without regard for any individualistic characteristic. And that is the basis of our morality. In, in terms of what guides the construction of the nation, it's fairness, it's justice, it's equal quality of opportunity, it's liberating people from biases and stereotypes that would hold them back from realizing their potential. That, in its best form, is what the American dream is to me. It's the opportunity for people, regardless of their station or where they were born into, having a nation where you have the opportunity to go as far as you want to. But of course, that requires looking out for other people and also not discriminating against people based on your religious preferences. I don't think that's compatible with being a Christian first because so much discrimination is inherent in those biblical texts because of their authoritarian nature. When you, when I at least, looked into it, the only sort of, sort of political theory that exists in the Bible that I've been able to uncover is authoritarian or, or monarchy. There were judges at one point who had power to judge the people, and you know, if you read, you've watched the Bible Reloaded, you know, parts of the the Bible reading where they go through judges. That's the sort of thing that I'm thinking of. But the rest of the Bible really focuses on the notion of monarchy and kings, and the Bible itself only provides government governing instructions as relates to kings. So the people had to respect the office of the monarch and the Bible itself in, in Exodus forbids the people from cursing God or the prince, thereby making the prince uh, uh, like God in that, that neither can be criticized, that thought crime, it, to it's, it's a thought crime, well at least it's a speech crime to say anything against the prince with the idea that you should also be thinking it. And that's it. There is a, an element here where the kings weren't in charge of the judicial, judicial system, but really if you go looking for political theory in the Bible, it's rather bare bones, antiquated, and really not relevant for thousands of years of human civilization. It really reflects the values of a Bronze Age population. When you move into the New Testament, these ideas of having reverence for 
the authorities because those authorities must be there because of the will of God, because everything is the will of God. We find it both in Romans and in Hebrews. Now, Romans scholars are almost are universally agreed that it was written by Paul. Hebrews, to my understanding, based on Bart Ehrman's lectures and scholarship on earlychristianwritings.com, is an anonymous piece of writing. We don't know who wrote Hebrews, but because people at the time thought it sounded like something an apostle would have written, it made it into the book. Neither of these um, pieces of political theory from the Bible provide any kind of moral justification for the American Revolution. In Romans 13, Paul wrote, Everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, he who rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. In Hebrews 13, we have, Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your souls, as those who will have to give an account. There is no just there are no passages that says that say if the ruler is bad and kills a bunch of Christians, that means you should rebel against the leader. There's there's no kind of out clause anywhere in the Bible for that kind of thinking. It's only submission, and it's not just submission to the king, but it's submission to the king or the authorities because God has instituted them. It's divine will that the world is the way it is, and to upset the order is to go against God. Pretty clear cut, in my opinion. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, when I had originally posted this on the forum, and this is where I got, you know, picked up this idea from, I've had this idea for a long time, and I was writing on the 4th of July because I was musing about the American Revolution being not anywhere justified in the Bible. This is what I wrote. For Christian Americans, how do you reconcile the fact that the start of the rebellion that we were celebrating on the 4th of July, or celebrate every year on the 4th, is in direct violation of the express word of God that is found in your scriptures? Of course, as an atheist, I have no problem with people challenging the established power of the state. But according to the Bible, only God establishes our civil authorities, and that according to his will. So when the founders rebelled, they not only rebelled against the form of government that God had instituted, but when they rebelled against, the, against England, they were also rebelling against God's anointed so sovereign over England and its colonies as well as being the head of the Christian church in England. So it was not, they were rebelling against the church as well as against God's anointed and violating the word of God that is found in the Bible. In its place, did they create a theocracy? No, they didn't. They created a, a completely anti-biblical form of government. They created a government based not on God's authority or biblical laws, but one determined by worldly people. They created a secular government that had nothing to do with observing, you know, religious holy days or quoting from the Bible or citing biblical laws. Instead, it was based entirely on secular principles. The founders created a government of, by, and for the people. God had nothing to do with it. And so it seems to me that Christians who love God first and foremost above everything, including their country and the freedoms they derive from being citizens of that country, well, they should have a really big problem with the fact that according to their own holy book, the entire history of the United States is an abomination in the, in the eyes of their God because it was a rebellion against God's anointed sovereign. And it was a rebellion against a Christian-based form of government to move to a completely one that was, you know, secular or almost, you know, atheistic in terms of how it was constructed. Um, so those are my musings. That's my observation of some cognitive dissonance that doesn't make sense to me. And also it's a point that I don't see often brought up here on YouTube. And that was all. So I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys have to say in the comments. Do you know of other videos that touch upon this topic? Do you know of books on the political theory of the Bible or any arguments that people made against the American Revolution at the time based on biblical arguments saying that it was anti-God and, and anti-Christian? I would be really interested in that because I think it's an interesting topic that could be more deeply explored and debated. And with that said, uh, all that's left to be said now is that uh, I've been Christy and you've been awesome. We'll be getting back to regular original content production now that I'm back from my travels and I'm looking forward to chatting with you and having you around. So I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.